related to, to communication and conflict, um, it helps to talk about how you guys are going to uh, resolve conflict and if there's been hurt feelings or frustration or anger um, or an offense, um, collaborating and coming up with uh, a way of apologizing and reconciling when trust has been broken or feelings have been hurt. And um, that, that can uh, look different for, um, for each family. And so one thing to talk about is did the process of um, asking for forgiveness and apology and, um, and coming back together, reconnecting, reconciling, um, was that healthy? Uh, in your family of origin and is that something that you want to carry into your marriage or is that something that um, you want to do different with your marriage and with your family uh, so developing uh, that can be really helpful um, the one of the things that makes uh, the stress and conflict and problem solving really hard is uh, just the issue of boundaries is sorting out um, my identity, like who who, who am I uh, now that um, I've gotten married? I'm not a single person anymore. I'm married. What's this? Um, uh, what's this going to mean? And uh, Dr. Timothy Keller in the book The Meaning of Marriage, he he talks about uh, this this tension that a lot of couples, a lot of young people have these days as they enter into marriage or, or um, get remarried is that they can have on one hand a deep disillusionment about marriage um, whether that's from their own experiences or their own family of origin uh, maybe divorce in their family um, a deep disillusionment um, and at the same time uh, a deep sense of, of hope and um, expectation uh, about marriage so talking about what marriage means uh, to each of you individually and uh, as a couple um, is something that um, can be really helpful to uh, align get, and get on the same page because uh, what you want your marriage to be and, and mean um, will really uh, help you with decision making and and uh, uh, with the choices and details uh, getting sorted out um, and so one, this is also one of the things that blindsides people e whether you've been together for six months or six years uh, the, the, the decision to marry and, and, and become husband and wife it's 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 huge it's it's a huge commitment and sometimes you, even if you've known each other for a long time even if you're living together already uh, sometimes that that can bring up a lot of um uh, dormant stuff um, sometimes people can freak out and have second thoughts and it can bring up a lot of doubts and insecurity about a whole bunch of things about marriage about um, the future and so hopefully being aware of that that that's a possibility will help you um, if, if you're on the other side of that not freak out in response and, and be reactive so um, th there's two ways that people uh, can react in an unhealthy way to having ambivalence or doubts uh, about the decision to, to get married. Um, one is to thoughtlessly talk about it. And what I mean by that is uh, just being really open and blunt without considering how it might affect your spouse. Um, that, that, that's not very helpful. Um, but, but on the other side of that, um, not being open and honest um, about how you're th what you're thinking and how you're feeling because you're concerned about 
the effect of of, of how you feel um, will have on on your spouse um, it, it is not healthy either if you you start uh, hiding um, and being less than honest um, and so, so so sometimes it can help to talk with a friend or a mentor an older couple maybe a pastor or even a counselor um, uh, about uh, uh, challenges and uh, yeah so um, practical the practical area uh, communication and conflict resolution uh, issues of identity um, and meaning and time uh, the these are are related to, to boundary issues um, the issue uh, of uh, where where do I stop as an individual and then where do we begin and so a lot of the first um, months of marriage is making this adjustment to living pretty self-focused and all your decisions made um, based uh, on uh, being an ind individual and then the adjustment to uh, being a couple now um, that can literally that, that's why um, the issue of um, how you spend your money um, how you spend your time um, can can cause conflict because you can you can either uh, defer and comply and go along um, to to avoid conflict um, and or you can kind of fight for your space and your time and um, and and that that's not necessarily a negative thing um, if you're aware of, of what's at stake um, and so uh, be careful with uh, especially when you're sorting out the how things are gonna look um, if you're the one who tends to defer and not care as much and and just kind of go along um, that thing can be good but um, be careful of not deferring too much if you if you notice that you defer like eight nine times in a row or eight nine times out of ten on decisions um, after a while uh, you can uh, th that can be an unhealthy pattern a bad habit um, and that can lead to resentment and feeling unimportant or, or disrespected uh, and on the other side of that, um, so, sometimes your spouse might be happy for you to defer on decisions because they end up getting what they want um, in the short term. But in the long term, they want a partner. They they don't want you to be passive. Uh, they don't. They can end up feeling resentful and alone too, um, and burdened by having to make all the choices. So as much as you can, guys, uh, early on, uh, even though it can be hard, uh, try to be assertive, as assertive as you, you can. Try to be as honest as you can um, and collaborate and create uh, a win-win, the, the, the best um, uh, type of marriage uh, and, and home uh, that you want together. Um, and you, you'll, you'll take turns. Uh, deferring and um, and uh, compromising uh, but but tr but try not to um, end up feeling uh, like a victim or feeling like you lose all the time on on decisions another area um, that can cause conflict and be hard um, is the area of sex and sexual intimacy 